this is the movie, by the way, where if you've seen like TikToks or reels of it, it's the right. make, make your, your own, own kind of music. Sing your own special song. No. I am the father. And here we go. That belongs in a museum. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? You're gonna need a bigger boat. This is Sparta! Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Thatcher, welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome back to Easily Entertained. I'm your host, Bryson, here to talk about all things entertainment. I am once again joined by fellow entertainment enjoyer, Cormac Bone. Yes, sir. Heck yeah, on episode 25 of Easily Entertained. 25, hey, it's kind of a milestone. Yeah, we are like halfway through the year, which is kind of crazy. That's almost 100. Yeah, I know. I've been doing this <laughs> since like the end of October. This feels kind of oh, whack. Right on. Yeah. But yeah, so this week we are talking about the unbearable weight of massive talent all about nick cage the yes. true story no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> absolutely 100 percent true yeah. should be watched as a documentary yeah so <laughs> take it all as fact mm -hmm. uh it's pretty great but yeah so the unbearable weight of massive talent it when did that one come out i think 22 21 i can find out go for it but yeah so it stars nicholas cage and Pedro Pascal. 22. Um, so Nicolas Cage plays himself. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a over-dramatization of his acting career. It's kind of like come to a lull. And he's like, well, I'm going to retire from acting. I'm not getting the roles I want. And then Pedro Pascal's character, who is not himself. Right. Not um, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. He plays Javi Gutierrez. Javi. Um, so he's having a birthday party and he wants Nicolas Cage as the guest of honor. Right. And so... He invites him over. And with that, they kind of hit it off talking about movies because Javi's a huge fan to a really creepy extent. In fact, right. he has like a shrine to Nicolas Cage. It's yeah. a little ridiculous. But then they decide they want to make a movie together. Yeah. And we're like, yes, this right. is great. It, initially, it was um, so, okay, so I was kind of apprehensive about mm -hmm. it. I was like, how are they going to, because I, I, I knew Nick Cage was playing himself coming into it. So I was like, how is it going to be played off? Is it going to be, are they going to try and make it a little serious? But they don't. Mm -hmm. They make it pretty, like you said, dramatized yeah. and pretty fun and goofy. Yeah. So I was, I was certainly pleased with that. And then, yeah, so the, when they start, to, when they decide to write the movie together, it's because the CIA are trying to help. Well, Nick Cage is, they've, the CIA has helped, asked Nick Cage for his help. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's trying to do some espionage. Yeah, yeah, espionage on 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 Javi Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because apparently the president of Catalonia's daughter was kidnapped. Right, like in the, this happens at the very beginning of the movie. Yeah, the she's girl, watching. She's watching a Nick Cage, Nick Cage movie. Film. Um, I don't remember which one. Yeah, me neither. It was. It's him with long hair. Yeah, I don't know enough uh, about Nick Cage, to I be honest. I don't either. We should have had Aiden, Aiden on the podcast. Yeah. Aiden. <laughs> Aiden. Aiden. But, so, yeah, the CIA is like, yo, you need to help us. We're pretty sure Javi has kidnapped a girl. Right. We're like, what? Yeah, for the sake of, like, mm -hmm. uh, altering the results of a... Of an election an to make election. it more crime friendly. Yeah. Like, yep. so the cartel can move in and sell drugs and weapons and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious that they're like, Nick Cage, we need your help. <laughs> right. Yeah. You did National Treasure. You can help us with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's because he, you know, it's the mm -hmm. wacky zany moment where he happens to be the, just, the hyper fixation of Javi Gutierrez. Yeah. It's just circumstance. He happens to be there. He's yeah. like, oh, this works out great. Yeah, so it wasn't really Javi who kidnapped someone. It was his cousin, cousin. Lucas. Who really runs the, the Gutierrez crime family. Yeah. Javi is just kind of there. He's just <laughs> like, I just do what I want. I be chilling. Yeah. It's the, it's, this is the movie, by the way, where if you've seen like TikToks or reels of it, it's the right. make, make your, your own, own kind, kind of music. music. Sing your own special song. Yeah. And it's the Nick Cage looking over and Pedro Pascal just being like. Right. So uh, it's 
just like a fun little goofy kind of movie. Yeah. I like it. I to think... me, to me, what it was was it was the bromance between oh. Javi and Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I mean, it was a movie for the for that kind of mm-hmm. audience where you're there with your 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 best bros and you're like, dude, this is how I feel about you. Yeah, <laughs> and Nick Cage kind of is just like, I'm just gonna go somewhere, and like it's a typical kind of just doing this because I have to and then he ends up falling in love right with yeah Javi and they want to kiss yeah and they have a that bromance yeah yeah they have okay. <laughs> no they don't <laughs> and it was so then it brought up the question again with I was like how serious are they gonna be because there's he's got a kid Nick Cage has a child in it and I was like wait does Nick Cage actually have a kid is that his real kid in mm-hmm. the movie oh no no all made up he does have a kid, I think. Right, but he just, not, it's just not that woman. <laughs> yeah, not the act, actor who played who played his daughter in this film mm-hmm. is not his actual daughter. But I thought it could be. So. Yeah, so it's like kind of this whole conflict of like him retiring from acting yeah. too is like he is divorced from his wife and he's not spending enough time with his daughter as... Right, uh, he's too career-oriented. Yeah, typical celebrity kind of stuff <laughs> right. going. They're just like, uh this is how it is, you know. Right, yeah. So, My career. I got to get the next movie. <laughs> I got to get the career going. Yeah. And so that's kind of where all of it kind of starts. And he's like, I'm going to retire. And then his agent, Neil Patrick Harris, yeah, is like, you're going to go to this guy's birthday on a remote island just because. Yeah, wasn't it like an a million dollar check for doing it? Probably. <laughs> I think it was something like that. It was like you I mean, get which paid. I mean, which I mean, a million dollars. For anything, I right. would be like, yes, yeah, yes. Doesn't matter what the other thing is. And yes. there was something about like Nick Cage wasn't paying the rent for the place that he need like needed to be, or place that he was living, and so that's why he went for the money mm-hmm. initially. And then, like Bryson says, then they fall into this bromance that's very adorable. Yeah. I'll be honest, it's, I love it. It's actually it. so cute. And Pedro Pascal, little soft boy, yeah, I love him, yeah. And and they don't reveal that to you mm-hmm. that he isn't th- until really toward the end of the film. Yeah. And so the whole time you're kind of like he seems so soft, but I don't know. Yeah, and, you're and kind of there's going some moments it. where you're like, whoa, he you're was like, kind of oh, hard. Kind of. I hope he's actually a good guy and not right. Yeah. That he doesn't have to be killed by Nicholas Cage. Right, because just like Nick, we're falling in love with Javi. Yeah. We're like, hey, he's a good friend. Like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. They even end up on like a little face off with each other because the CIA yeah. is like, you have to kill Javi. Yeah. And then Lucas is, says to Javi, he's like, you have, you to, have kill to kill Nick, Nick Cage, Cage. or yeah. I kill you. Yeah. He's like, what? My best friend. I, I can't, can't do, do it. it. <laughs> Why? But yeah, it's pretty self-aware. I would say with this movie, they know exactly what they are doing. Um, and what's kind of funny is the whole like characters wanting to make a movie yeah. throughout the film while kind of describing the film that they're in. Yeah. They're like, we want it to be very character driven. And this movie was super character driven. Yeah. Even Nick Cage, he's playing what everyone thinks of Nick Cage. Um, I was reading an interview where he's like, this isn't really me. It's just what everyone thinks of is Nick Cage. Right. Especially with the moments where he's with, um, like, in his mind, headspace, mm-hmm. and he's got that duplicate of himself. Yeah, it's supposed to be younger Yeah, Nick, younger Nick. Nicky. Nicky. And I, I think it's from a film. I could be wrong. That that other person, is, mm-hmm. that, uh, the younger Nick is a get up of. I think, I think it could be, but I, I, I might be wrong on that. Yeah. Anyway, that like that especially, I was like, that can't be... That can't be real. He wouldn't, no. especially if that was real, he wouldn't be really making a whole movie about it. Maybe no. he would, but see, that's again the point. He'd be like, you should be in witness protection. I don't know what's right. happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's just like goofy little Nick Cage playing himself. It's like what everyone thinks of as Nick right. Cage. You have Pedro Pascal, who's just like the goofy little soft boy. Yeah. Um, you have Lucas, who is just... An insane crime yeah. lord. He's basically. really the unhinged guy. Yeah, he's just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kill everybody. Yeah. Ah, it's just ridiculous. So it's very character driven for the most part, I would say, which I like when stories do that. Yeah, and especially for a film like this one, mm-hmm. it needed that for sure. Yeah, and then, like, as they're describing, like, what kind of movie they want to do, they're just like, we want it to be character driven. And like a comedy where it's driven by the characters and not just like putting jokes for all goofy 
right goofy laughs and i feel like that's what they do in this too. yeah they're like we know what we are we're yeah. doing the right thing and it's like so i hit my camera last time it was you now it's me <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know i just like how they did it i thought it was kind of they didn't take themselves too seriously right and right. i think with this kind of movie you can't take yourself too seriously definitely not um especially because nick cage i love nick cage <laughs> Uh, I feel like a lot of his roles aren't the most serious of roles. Yeah. It's just kind of like goofy, like corny kind of stuff. Yeah, like he adds think, a goofy element to yeah, any role. You think National Treasure or Ghost Rider. You think just kind of corniness yeah. to Nick Cage, which is not like a bad thing. No. I think it's pretty great. But it's certainly a character that he plays. Yeah. He's kind of <laughs> typecast. Yeah, as, yeah. As potential Nick Cage, <laughs> right? Yeah, which I, I I wonder again if that's part of the mm-hmm. the driving force behind making the film originally, mm-hmm. where they're like, uh, like you say, the idea of Nick Cage has grown so much. Yeah, it's kind of like a yeah. Nick Cage love fest, to yeah. be honest. Because they start off, the character is watching a Nick Cage movie. Yeah, the Javi has a Nick Cage shrine. Yeah, they mention. So, so many, many movies films. that he's been in. Gone so in 60 many. seconds and a bunch of Face others. Face off. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just kind of over-dramatizing everything about Nick Cage, which I find hilarious. Yeah. Because Nick Cage is cool. He's not like my favorite actor ever. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I'll one day get Nick Cage on the podcast. I'll be Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll have him at some point. That's true. We'll have our version of Cage. Yeah, anyway. our Nick Cage. Yeah. Be 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 on be on the lookout for our Nick Cage. Yeah, <laughs> local micro celebrity. Yeah, created Passion of the Cage. Look it up. Yeah, Passion of the Cage. Find Passion, it on YouTube. Passion of the Cage and Passion of the Cage Two. It's truly yeah magnificent. <laughs> yeah, if you want your life changed, mm-hmm. like if you're in a bad spot, go watch yeah. those. Genuinely, those it's where it's <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of like how self aware it is. It knows what it is, and it's not trying to be anything like massive it's not yeah. trying to take on it knew it would big... be a huge blockbuster film yeah they were like let's just give some joy out in the world exactly and totally did that job and there's quite a few big names in it too yeah that's you have true. nick cage you have pedro pascal neil yeah. patrick harris neil patrick harris you have demi moore yeah um who's his wife yeah that's mainly who i can think of oh who is it that um javi's into gabriella yeah gabriella um, Spicy mama. Yeah, it's true. She's in, if you've seen on Netflix, um, Master of None. It's a series by Aziz Ansari. Um, she's in that. And mm-hmm. she does. she's a very good actress. Yeah. Very good actor. And, and that show I would highly suggest also. Just s- slide that in. Yeah. <laughs> Master of None, good show. Yeah, I think it's just, it's kind of fun when they're self-aware. And it kind of lets the, the actors be so, like, goofy. Because they can kind of just have fun with it. They're yeah. not trying to be like, you have to be serious. We have to let our emotions drive everything. Right. And it's like, nah, you could just do whatever, really. And they'll make it up. There's like a scene where Nick has golden guns. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's a trope from one of his films mm-hmm. with the golden guns. Yeah. I just so, think it's, yeah. I think it's hilarious. I think it's worth the watch. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Ooh. And I kind of like how throughout the movie they're doing the like making a movie meta thing, like making a movie within a movie, which I feel like a lot of movies have been doing lately. It's kind of like a common trope Mm -hmm. now because we have like Babylon, you have, Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? The Fablemans that Spielberg did, which is like a dive into how he got into the film industry. And I find it just kind of, interesting that we're kind of going into like a mainstream meta route right because i feel like meta movies like that uh not meta as in facebook uh (laughs) just meta as in it's referencing what it is right yeah it's like the making of a movie as a film typically i find is more of a short film Type yeah. thing or a student film right like yeah. i had i did a couple of those in high school where it was just us deciding what to make a a video on mm. for a video assignment comedy yeah we were just like we have a video assignment i don't know what the idea is 
that's our idea. That's and so it's like it thing. feels like it feels like a basic kind of thing. But I like how they did it in this because it's not like super in your face. It's like, oh, we're making a movie about making a movie. Yeah. And it's a bit more subtle to it. Yeah, and like like they say and like you've been describing, they keep saying it's character driven. And so that that plot point mm-hmm. doesn't drive the movie. Yeah. Which if if that's your idea to make a movie about making a movie, it can very easily become that that's the whole plot. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, there's, why? Yeah. It's like, what's the point of really and, making that? And and at this point, a lot of people already kind of know that. And it's yeah. like, well, what kind of shenanigans can really ensue? Mm-hmm. So you have to, like, take different aspects of it. Yeah. Like, I heard, I haven't seen Babylon. I know it's about making a movie. And I think it's about, like, what certain aspects of filmmaking had gone into. Maybe we'll have to review that one on the podcast. We'll yeah. have to watch that if that comes out on anything like True. HBO. Yeah. Or we find it in the bargain bin. Well, sorry, Max, not HBO. Oh, right. <laughs> why Why wouldn't they have shortened it to HBO, man? Yeah. Peacock, it's your turn. Right, yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. There is no good answer. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> I find it so funny that HBO did that. Max. Max. Like it's your friend take from down to, the corner. Take it to the max. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I just think, I feel like Nick Cage does really good in the goofy roles. Yeah. Like, or like the ones that the character is serious, but like the role isn't actually serious. Right. So that irony, he thrives on it. Exactly. So kind of to come into our question of the week, uh, what is your favorite Nicolas Cage role? Ooh. I, ooh, that's a good question. Can like, cause, okay, this might be kind of cheating, but if you went to like voice acting. Yeah. go. Vo- you can go voice acting. He, he plays Spider-Man Noir. Yeah. <laughs> And I was gonna say, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was your favorite because of your Spider-Man connections. Mm-hmm. But that one is certainly up there because it's again the the irony of serious, but he's the only one who thinks he's serious. Yeah, because that that's the whole thing about being Spider-Man Noir. If he was in his own place, it would really really fit mm-hmm. where he is serious all the time. And I would wonder if there was like a film. That was just Spider-Man Noir and Nick Cage oh, is voicing that would it. Actually, be so sick. It'd be an interesting thing because wherever I go, the wind follows. Right, and the wind it smells like rain. It smells like rain. Right, yeah. And would it would it work as good as it does in Spider Verse? Yeah, because he's way out of his zone, and that gives that juxtaposition and funny irony about it. Mm-hmm. But I think since it would be anyway, that's probably yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, I definitely like his voice acting roles uh, because I really like Spider-Man Noir. Yeah. Um, I think it's just hilarious because I like how serious he is because Spider-Man Noir is a serious character. Yeah, super. And I like that it kind of comes out a bit more in Into the Spider-Verse because it's not like a super... Well, I mean, there's serious stakes in Into the Spider-Verse, but like the world they're in is not as serious as the noir world. Yeah. Um, But I also... I'm not even gonna lie. I really like him as Grug in the Crudes. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that he does that. Yeah, <laughs> I just think. In a minute. In a minute. <laughs> I just think voice acting. I think is actually Nicolas Cage's way to go. I would agree. Yeah, I do like some of his like live action yeah. roles. National like, Treasure is a treasure. Oh yeah, I love the National <laughs> Treasure movies. Um, did you see that he made a series? Yeah, I Disney started Plus? and then I ha- immediately stopped. Because <laughs> there's no Nicolas Cage? Yeah, honestly, that's that's like 80% of the reason why. <laughs> I was like, this sucks. Like, wh- where's my joy? Yeah, I haven't here. watched that. Um, but yeah, I like him in National Treasure, um, like as corny as those movies yeah. are. It's like, is this, we got to steal the Declaration of Independence. Um, but I also really like, uh, what was it? It's a really corny couple of movies, but him as Ghost Rider. Yeah. I do kind of like him as Ghost Rider. Yeah. It's a little ridiculous, especially when he first becomes Ghost Rider. Yeah. You have that meme of him being like, yeah. 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 Um, But I do like Ghost Rider, and I'm kind of excited to see who they pick 
yeah. new for Bring the MCU, in. um, who I really think could be really good is Norman Reedus, who plays Daryl in The Walking Dead. Okay. Uh, I think yeah. I think he could be really good. True. Because uh, he just has like that grit to him. Yeah, he really does. Mm-hmm. I've heard him or Keanu Reeves could be really good choices. Keanu Reeves could be really uh, good. Because they're that, true. those kind of like serious actors. Yeah. That are more like reserved. Like the tough reserve. Yeah. The quiet tough man. Right. Kind of thing. And so I feel like those could be really good yeah. for Ghost Rider. But yeah. That was the unbearable weight of massive talent. Huge talent. Huge, massive talent. It's unbearable, the weight. <laughs> oh. Yeah, definitely recommend it. I think it's a good one to watch. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll. it's just one you have a good time with. Yeah, I, I can. I And when I was watching it with Bryson, I could just see myself going out with the boys and be like, guys, this is a film for us. Let's just go there. Because, mm. I mean, if you're a guy and you get it, it's we don't talk about feelings, but this movie will tell you each other how you feel about each other. Yeah, you know, that's how it is. It's a bromance. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Who is Nick Cage and who is Javi? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, you got to know exactly who everybody <laughs> is. <laughs> like in our relationship, me and Cormac, Cormac is Javi, and I'm 100% <laughs> Nick Cage. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that soft boy, bro. <laughs> he is he's so goofy. The Pillsbury Doughboy laugh, and the Nick Cage is just like. <laughs> All right, buddy. You little crazy boy. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good movie. I think everyone should go check it out. Yeah. But yeah, and that does it for this episode. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, the first. Yep, and then the following week, we are going to be talking about Across the Spider-Verse because as, our... as of when this episode goes out, me and Cormac are going to be seeing Spider Across the Spider-Verse when it comes out. Yeah. Um. So exactly. we are so excited. Yeah, I cannot wait. One. So expect that for the next two episodes and then most likely Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls after those ones as well. So yeah, we got some good, got good some, stuff on the queue. Good, good stuff in the lineup. So yeah, thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, be sure to give us a follow so you can be notified of all the latest episodes. And until next time, peace. Stay entertained. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Easily Entertained. If you enjoyed, be sure to tune back in Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, where we're available on all podcast platforms. And if you want all the latest updates on all things entertainment, check us out on social media for Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And until next time, this is Easily Entertained.